Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Create a Survival Horror Game in Unity and welcome to episode 38. In this tutorial we are going to play around with some more AI and get our little stalker guy over here walking all the way around here trying to get to us. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, how do we establish this? Now, the general idea is that we want this guy to be able to walk around here of his own free will trying to get to us. And the way we're going to do that is using something called NavMesh. And NavMesh is a great way of allowing us to control where our guy can walk on this particular area. So to do this, you need to go to Window, go to AI and click on Navigation. Now by default it will be over here, some people do prefer it over here next to the hierarchy, down here. It's up to you where you want to have it. But essentially all we need to do is when we have the navigation there, <clears throat> in its simplistic terms, we just need to make sure we have the object selected, which is going to be the floor he's going to walk around on, and click on navigation static. Now the reason we click on navigation static is it means that this area is never going to change. He's always going to be able to walk around there. Just make sure you also have walkable in this navigation area selected. Then if we click on bake and just click bake, you'll see that the area turns a nice blue kind of colour. Now there are bits in here which will prove to be a little bit of a problem. As the whole area is selected, it means that he can walk around here no problem. It does also mean that he can pass through these particular objects here, and that can pose a slight problem. The reason being is because they are not selected as not walkable. So to get around that, all we need to do is click back on object up here, and then select the objects which are not walkable. So for example, all of these here within our arena. Next, we need to click on that navigation static, obviously because they're not going to move their walls. And we need to select not walkable from the navigation area. At that point, we can then click on bake and then click on bake once again. You'll notice that our line and outline kind of runs around each of those objects. That now means that our little stalker can only walk on blue areas. So if you've got other places um, within your arena, for example, all of these realistically could do with being changed as well. Although they're right at the edge, it's probably best to because it still means that he could slightly pass through the wall. And it's always just a case of clicking static and then clicking not walkable and then baking the area. You can see that works. So I'm not going to do all of that because that will just add more time to this tutorial than is realistically necessary. I might just do those two just to be 100% sure, but that's how quick it can be. Just a couple of mouse clicks, perfect. All of this area is walkable for our guy. It also means that it's, well, whether we've got this here or not, we can still walk on it. So we have the area set up. How do we make it so as our enemy over here walks around it? It's actually a lot simpler than what you would think. And we're gonna do this in two stages. So the script is gonna be a simple script, which allows him to walk. We're then going to advance the script so he only walks when we're within this vicinity. So if we're not there, he'll just stand idle. So how do we do this? Let's go to our scripts folder and let's go to, what should we go to? Let's just create it here. So let's go to create C sharp script and we'll have this as stalker AI. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So to do this, we also need to attach. Are you going to open for me? There we go. We also need to attach. Unity is not playing ball today. There we go. I'll try this sentence again. We need to attach something specific to our stalker enemy. We need to go to an inspector, click add component, and we need to type in, if we type in AG, we should have um, right there, nav mesh agent. So we need to attach this agent to the actual um, cube that encases our enemy, because this is going to be what controls 
the um, enemy itself and the ability to walk around. So we have the agent attached. In the script, we need to declare that it's there, basically. So in its simplest terms, like I said, this script comes in two phases. The first one is going to be the simplistic one, and then we'll advance it. So first things first, let's get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. We do, however, need start and update. So let's start with the two variables that we need. We need a destination. The destination is going to be where our stalker enemy can walk to or will walk to. So public game object and we'll call this stalker dest, just short for destination. Next, we need to say that we do have a nav mesh agent. So we need to say nav mesh agent. And we will also need to declare this as a namespace as well, because we need to tell the script that we are using some AI here. And we'll just call it the agent, just for simplicity. So up at the top where we've got using Unity Engine, let's add in the namespace for AI. Using Unity Engine dot AI, semicolon. Perfect. Now I'm thinking it should be really changed. Let's have this as stalker agent. Sounds kind of cool, I guess. So next thing we need to do is say stalker agent equals get component. And it's going to be nav mesh agent. If I can actually spell, I've done this the past couple of tutorials, haven't I? I just can't spell. Nav mesh agent, up close bracket and semicolon. And what that will do is it will tell the script that here is the agent. You can carry on as normal. Now what we need to do is in update, we need to tell it where to go. So by that standard, we just say stalker agent dot set destination. And then we need to work on a destination. So it's done by the um, transform position. So we're going to say stalker dest dot transform dot position close bracket semicolon and save so like i say this first phase is a simplistic term it, it's done that's as simple as it gets now what i'm going to do here is it's going to look a little bit strange but we set the um, destination as the player and realistically it should always be the player anyway but like i say the second phase we're going to control what's what so let's attach the stalker ai script onto our stalker enemy and i know we have some stuff here to play around with but i'm not going to go into this just yet we're going to leave it as its default settings and then see what needs changing so stalker dest let's have that as our fps controller and press play let's just get straight into it and see how this looks so i'm going to switch back to the scene view so you can see already, it looks a little bit strange. So we can see that he's got basically stuck. He's glitching through here because I haven't set these areas as not walkable for him. He's also gliding because his default animation is idle, not crouched walking. So let's set as default state. So now he should play the walking animation. Next thing we need to do is we need to establish his speed. His speed was a little bit fast then, so let's tone that down a bit. We have speed as 3.5 by default. Let's have that as two, and let's see how that reacts now. Let's also keep an eye on where he's walking. So he's just going around there. So he's clipping there, which is fine, but he is walking through here. So I know I said I wasn't going to, but I'm going to click back on navigation and I'm actually going to set all of these as not walkable. Uh, so object, static, not walkable. Let's go into bake. And what else can we do here? Let's just click bake. I'm thinking maybe we could actually advance this a little bit more. For example, um, he kind of walks through this just a little bit, but we could actually work around the radius of it just a little bit. I mean, you could work, 
for example, here, you could change that and you can see just how much he has to go around. So if we press play, let's see how it now reacts. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how that's now looking. You can see he is obviously making a decent attempt at avoiding the obstacles that he needs to. So you should play around with this a little bit more um, than just what I've done. I've done a quick kind of judgment there to do that. Um, but I might put that as 1.75 and rebake. Just always remember to rebake once you change something here. So that should be okay. He looks like he is stalking there with the way he's walking around. So I'm actually going to go into the game view and see how he reacts to us walking through these halls. There he is. He's coming after us now. So if we run down here, there we go. So you can see he's stalking us wherever we go. So if we go through here, let's see what he does. Will he come through here? He will. Awesome. So next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add the ceiling on top there. Just to kind of not make it look so bright. So hopefully this should look a little bit creepier if we press play and try and go through now. A bit more horrorish, I guess. So you come here and then you see that you think, oh gosh. So always work with the lighting. Perfect. So let's have a look. Is he sliding across the floor a little bit? I think his speed may need to be decreased ever so slightly. But again, that's something you guys should work on. Probably 1.75. Now, you can play around with some of these. They are pretty self-explanatory. You've got your obstacle avoidance there. That one is probably going to be what you'll play around with the most. It basically means how much is he going to kind of swerve around some of these obstacles, i.e. the walls. The higher it is, the more. But I, I wouldn't recommend playing around too much with these. I think its default settings is pretty decent, to be honest. So let's get on to the second phase of this. Let me turn that off again so we can see everything. The second phase revolves around us uh, being able to get away from him. And there's obviously different ways of doing this. There's obviously different ways you can do this. But I'm going to go for a simple way of doing it as, for example, when we're here, he's not interested in stalking us anymore. As soon as we enter his arena, his domain, that's when he will do it. Now, to do that, we are going to add in a variable into our stalker AI script. And that is going to control whether he is after us or not. So if we go to nav mesh agent just below it and say public game object, and we'll actually refer to him directly, stalker enemy, because we're going to control his animations. And we'll also have public static bool is stalking semicolon. So by default, this is going to be false, which means that he's not going to do anything. So in void update, we need to say if is stalking equals false, which it will be when we start the game, then all we need to do is say that the animation to play is going to be idle. So stalker enemy dot get component this breaky brackets animator oh close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the idle animation which i believe is just called idle uh, i will double check that it is indeed called idle and semicolon so that now means that he's not going to walk to the destination we're going to say else after that statement and then open curly bracket and then a close curly bracket after it but we also need to make sure that we play his walking animation 
So I think I'm actually going to copy the name rather than type it. It's always best to copy in cases like this, just in case you end up with a typo. And let's save that script. So if we head back into Unity and press play now, and head back to the scene view while it's playing. So he isn't doing anything, but by default, right. I've just established, yet yeah, by default, he is walking anyway. So let's set his default animation back to idle and try that again. And he should just be stood there. Even when we walk up to him, he's not going to do anything. Although now I think about it, we probably should have assigned, if I can find him again, <laughs> we should probably should have assigned that variable because stalker enemy, it should be there. But we will keep it as idle by default. So let's press play. And just make sure everything is as intended. Idle. Perfect. So next, what we need to do is let's have it so as when we enter this section here, he then starts to come after us. So just to kind of prove it, what I want to do is I'm going to start it, walk this way, and wait here for a second so he's not following us, there's nothing. He should just be stood there, which he is. So now let's have that trigger here so he starts following us. So game object, 3D object, cube. Let's bring that into position through this little corridor. Somewhere about there, I think. That should do. And let's stretch it across the hallway so we can trigger it. And it's going to be on the Z, so let's have that as 4. Probably needs to be a bit bigger, but I guess it doesn't matter too much for now. Uh, let's untick mesh render it, and let's go to our scripts. And create a new C Sharp script. And this one is called activate stalker. And let's head into that script. Now this is going to be done on a void on trigger enter. So void on trigger enter. And it doesn't need to be private. So as soon as we enter this trigger, we need to disable the um, actual collider because we don't want to be able to keep doing this. So this dot game object dot get component in spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and at the same time we need to reference that stalker ai because we need to turn that bool to true which means that all this is going to work down here so stalker ai dot, and then we can find it in the list, is stalking equals true. Semicolon, save. Head back into Unity. Let's rename this cube down here and have stalker active. And then we just need to attach that stalker script. Where is it gone? Activate stalker onto there. And make sure we tick is trigger. And let's give this a go. In fact, let's put the ceiling back on. Hopefully, we should be able to see him come after us. So, so far, he isn't because we've not crossed that trigger. But when we do, we've entered the area. And he's not coming. Let's... Oh, there he is. He... Oof, he got me there. He didn't come the way I was expecting. But there we go. We now have him coming after us. So obviously at the moment, being able to shoot him, it's not gonna do anything. He's not gonna do anything. You just need to apply the same logic. I'm sure I mentioned it last time. The same scripting, same principles as you did for the zombie. Like I say, I'm not gonna um, do that again because there's no point repeating the same tutorial over. You can always just head back to that one and just use the same scripts. So yeah, so far we have that working as intended. Now I'm happy with that, how that's working. 
And I think realistically, there is more that can be done. Obviously, we want him to stop stalking us when we get to a certain point. Um, so we'll probably work on that next tutorial. Speaking of next tutorial, what are we going to do? We're actually going to build up the next little area here, which is where we get our right part of the eye to complete the puzzle. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.